morning. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, all. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. What a great day. Blessed Resurrection sure. Day. Oh, well, yeah. you know, here it comes, right? Oh, she left. She left. He is risen. He is he risen, risen indeed. indeed. He is risen indeed. So this is a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's um, let's pray. Let's pray together. Our Lord and our God, thank you that you don't wait for us to be ready for you, to understand you, <laughs> to have our doors open for you to come. You come within locked walls and locked doors. You come when we're least expecting it. You come in the most wonderful ways. We need you in your resurrection this day. And here you come. We don't even know how to ask. And the things that we surrounded with in this earth, we don't know how to ask or go forward. And yet you are gracious and merciful and you come. You bring resurrection all around the earth when the earth is needing it most. Thank you, O Lord, that your wisdom is above our wisdom, that your ways are higher than our ways. Thank you that we are claimed by you. We love you, Lord. Jesus, we pray. Amen. So let's read together. Um, we we read the first part of 12 before, but let's read again 12 through 17. I mean, 12 verses 1 through 17 of Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Would someone like to read? I'll read. I'll read. Okay. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Oh, 11. 11. Oh. 11. I thought you said 12. Oh, I'm sorry, 12, 12, 12, 12. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I said them all. So Some of us are old. <laughs> I'm going to read 12 verses 1 through, did you say 17? Yes. Okay. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. And dear trials for the sake of discipline, God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us and we respected them. Should we not by e be even more willing to be subject to the father of spirits and live? For, <clears throat> excuse me, for they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. Now, discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time. Later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, let your drooping hands, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet and what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. Pursue peace with everyone, and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it many become defiled. See to it that no one becomes like Esau, an immoral and godless person who sold his birthright for a single meal. 
you know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, <clears throat> he was rejected. For he found no chance to repent, even though he sought the blessing with going? Um, that's good for now. What do you think of those verses? I think it's perfect for what we're going through right now. <laughs> uh -huh. A lot of punishment. <laughs> uh, A lot of discipline. <laughs> um, I, I'm it's glad it's that you were trials about... for the sake of discipline. It's just, that's what we're all doing. Hmm. And that discipline is, um, I liked hearing the laughter while you're reading that, Sally, <laughs> because it's so casual and we don't always yeah. have discipline. Oh. Um, <clears throat> but it's true, isn't it? Discipline's not always pleasant. But think about this discipline again in the context of the race. He, he starts out talking about this race. Um, when I was in, um, you know, in my senior year and I was on the soccer team for our school, our coach liked to just run us into the ground. But we were, I've never been in better shape in all my life. And I had, um, you know, I had classes on the third store of the building and I would run up and down the stairs because it just felt good to me. You know, and I, and I think of this, the same place, the, the, the discipline put me in that condition that all the encumbrances of weariness and stuff were just put off. And so here they're talking about running the race. If we remember back to the um, chapter 11, it's the people of faith and it, and it talks about all these wonderful things. Remember we were mentioning last week <clears throat> that these are all, all these, the first part of Hebrews 11 are all the movies that turn out well. It's got all this drama, excitement, scary parts, tension, but then you have these happy endings, like a lot of our movies. Um, we watched the series the other night that ended with this, you know, the, these women overcoming all odds um, to pursue their dreams against sexism and violence and, and um, unfaithfulness and everything else. And they, they stood forward and and pursue their dreams and they go out to the to the beach at night to celebrate that and someone comes and shoots them and, and that that's the end of the series we don't have many stories that are that way um our stories always you know our movies end up with these wonderful endings but in hebrews 11 the last half it says um you know women receive back their dead by resurrection others were tortured um, they were mocked, they had scourging, they had they were imprisoned, they were stoned, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword, they were cut in two, they were left destitute and, and wandering the earth, ill-treated, afflicted, of whom the earth was not worthy. And we think of the, um, you know, all of the people who've gone before us who have been faithful through great adversity and trial, through um, slavery through oppression through you know violence and and scattering and, and all the things they've gone through and these people are now filling the stands and by the way these stands are filled with people who went through the uh, pandemics of the past too they're up there and they're all cheering us on so we have that race in chapter 12 and that discipline is to to help us put off the encumbrances You know, I heard a lot of um, throwing off the weights. Did you hear those things? I think about my mom. When, when I was little, my mom liked to go jogging. And she had these huge, heavy, cloppy leather shoes that she liked to run with. And I thought, Mom, those are horrible shoes to run with. They, I mean, it's like running with cement around your feet. Um, and she, those were the ones that she just felt good in. You know, she just would run in those. But I've thought about that or thought about times when I'm, you know, walking through the mud in the jungle or something and, and how that just soaks in. And think of the circumstance we go in, the things that weigh us down, the burdens, the concerns, the fears, the anxieties, the loneliness. All these things are encumbrances that 
that weigh our feet down. And chapter 12 begins, we have a great cloud of witnesses there in the stands that hearing the sounds of throw off these encumbrances and run the race. There's this rising up. It says there is, there is this discipline from God, but the discipline from God helps us to learn to, to run and to, to run this race even better. At the moment, it seems not to be joyful, but afterward it yields peaceful fruits and righteousness. So look at verses 12. Therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak, the knees that are feeble. Make straight the paths to your feet. Think of the times that you have been weary and ready to just collapse. That's how I felt last night when I went to bed. <laughs> Kathy carried some beautiful rocks for our um, oh. for our yard from the surrounding hillsides, and then afterwards she was a little sore. Sounded like a good idea at the time, huh? <laughs> At the time, it didn't seem so joyful, but the joy is there now. When you it was very it. much worth it, yeah. The rock garden is, is beautiful. Right. In verse 15, throw off the bitterness. Let no bitterness hamper you down. Think of the ways that bitterness keep us from experiencing joy in life. Think of people who are unable to forgive and how that bitterness just keeps them from being free or times in our lives when that's happened. I had a roommate in medical school that we had a lot of really difficult times seeing life the same way. We, we battled. We did not get along really well. We had very different worldviews. And even after he left, a year later, two years later, living in that same little house, I was still fighting him. He was gone. I was making it all up in my head. You know, I was reliving these battles and, and I'm thinking, he doesn't, he's free somewhere else in the world. Why should I still be battling these things? Why, you know, why not let go of these bitter things of the past? So Hebrews talked about, you know, we've left Egypt. Why do we want to go back in bondage? With the things we can't forgive. With the things that we can't let go of. For the hurt. The bitterness. Put it all aside. Because there's this incredible race that we're part of. And all the people in the stand are saying, we've been through that before. And it's worth running the race. It's worth letting go of those things. Other thoughts? I don't know if it's the image that, you know, maybe it's not the image that came for you, for you but I just felt this incredible freedom reading this, and it reminded me of um, rising up with wings like eagles, letting go of the things that hold us down. Reminded me of, of the birds that have gotten stuck inside the house and we caught them and let them go and they just fly higher and higher and higher into the sky. And even people who are within restrictions and in difficult circumstances, when they are free, you know, have this incredible grace and love and mercy. And I think that's what he's calling the people to. Can we be free even in the adversities of pandemics in our houses? Yeah, sorry, Joyce. That's okay. I was thinking of pandemics myself. I, I listen to people on Facebook and different places that are so angry that they can't be in church this morning. They're missing the joy of the resurrection because their anger is so deep at being told you can't go worship. And I think that's where we're blessed, is that we realize we worship together where we are.
my you know, brother this... in Nepal just sent me a greeting, oh. an Easter greeting. They've already finished their Easter celebrations because they're a whole day ahead of us. You know, I think this pandemic is really longing to set us free. The earth is, is longing to be free. And I think that the earth is rejoicing like it hasn't in a long time right now. Um, with, with clear skies and clear waters and with rest, the earth is getting rested. It really, really needed. And I've been thinking more and more about maybe God is answering the prayers of the earth and telling humans, you're going to have to be patient a while. You know, most of the time the, the, the um, humans have their way and the earth has to be patient. But for these few weeks, the earth is getting a rest, a break. But people are not getting the rest. People are not. And, and, and so what would, you know, with, with uh, because why? No. <clears throat> because of the pandemic and we are not able to deal with it. So for some who are in the middle of illness all around and having to care for people and watching that and having loved ones die and not being able to be with them, I mean, I can hardly imagine anything, you know, a greater anguish than that. That's one thing. Being cooped inside our homes for a while, that really is relatively small price to pay, pay compared to what some people are paying. Sure. Yeah. I think, I think one of the things, Hi, of course, Antoinette. We, Hi, Antoinette. we've all seen such horrible things on TV, but one of the things that just struck me as very sad and I'm sure this takes place a lot in New York City anyway, but burying all these coffins of unclaimed bodies. I mean, it's just, it's just so sad. I mean, they were just lowering these wooden boxes into this huge trench. And I just, I just thought someone in the world loves them but doesn't have a clue where they are or they hadn't been in touch or whatever. And like I say, I'm sure this is something that always goes on, but with the pandemic status and how many bodies they had, it's just so sad. It's just like they didn't get a final blessing. They didn't, you know, maybe there is someone out there who loved them, you know, and it just my heart aches for them, you know. And then I think, well, God welcomed them into his into his heaven, into his glory, because, you know, they might have had no one or nothing, but they may have still had a belief, you know, and so I think that was the only thing that got me through watching that and just feeling incredibly sad for these people. You know, but coffin upon coffin was buried. It's very sad. I've been reading a devotional from Richard Rohr. Um, he wrote The Universal Christ. And one of the things he was saying is that, you know, if, if you haven't had a prayer practice before, now is a really good time to establish it. We've got this nice long chunk of time that is, you know, that we know is going to be protected and it's kind of an opportunity to to get something new. Yeah. The what Christ? The essential Christ? The universal Christ. The universal Christ. Richard Bohr? Rohr, A-R-O-H-R. -R. Thank you. The sadness is, is so deep and so widespread. Um, covering the you know just talking to to my loved ones in other continents there is this deep deep sadness that they're carrying you know and, and all throughout our country the people who are facing this this, this sorrow is heavy and in the stands 
in this stadium, there are people who have experienced those things. They're there. They've seen the other side of that. And they're telling us to keep running, not to give up on that. There are people who know the price. And, and yet in verse 4, it says, um, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Hmm. Kind of like the suffering that we're enduring is nothing compared to the suffering of Jesus on his way to the cross and on the cross. Hmm. It's almost, it's almost belittling our our struggles in a way because it's not a lot comparatively speaking. Well, in, in the context of the people of Hebrews, you know, compared to what some of the people in other areas were going through, it's kind of like us being in isolation compared to what people are going through in, in New York City. You know, he's saying that there are others who have gone through really difficult things you haven't and so um what does it take to keep running that race and not give up what does it take to to stay fast on that so the suffering of so the suffering of jesus let's go on from 18 verse 18 through 29 i can read okay. go ahead you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrified and was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal, festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Ab Abel. Keep going, or Yeah, let's go to the end of the chapter. Okay. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. He has an incredible way of mixing together incredible freedom and joy with yikes this is you know there's there there's the fire and the terror and the fear mixed in with the freedom and the angels and the singing he's he's putting both out there and he's saying which one do you want um you know there is both sides in god what do you make of what is this he's talking about in verses 18 to um 21 <clears throat> it's a little weird. For you have not come to a mountain that may, may be, um, 
You've not come to a mountain that may be touched, to a blazing fire, to darkness, gloom, and whirlwind, to blast of trumpets, sound of words that made people beg not to hear another word. That's what it was like on Mount Sinai. Yeah, it's the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah, that's, you know, that was this mountain. So this is, this is the God of, you know, God seeking another way. God tried that way, and people were... Um, they were still choosing to go back to Egypt. Even after all of that amazing power and glory and splendor, they're still making false gods and going back to other things and forgetting their deliverer. So he's saying, do you, do you really want to go back to that? You, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of our living God, with the angels heavy and heavenly Jerusalem with the firstborn. And this firstborn of all the people who are uh, enrolled in heaven is a contrast with the firstborn in the plagues of Egypt that lost their lives. This last week when I had um, Passover supper with my sister and her family who are Jewish in Ecuador, they were talking about praying that the angel of death will pass over us now with this pandemic. And thinking about the firstborn of every household died in that plague. And what would be the cry of our land if that were happening here, the firstborn of every single house. So here he's talking about in contrast to that, you know, that you might know that I am the Lord. You know, um, he's talking about the, the firstborn being in heaven, the firstborn being claimed by God, the firstborn being, being saved. Being set free. Welcome, new class member. Hmm. It is, is a little needy this morning. <laughs> no. <laughs> he just wanted to participate. Heaven is ours for the having. Will we have it? Or do we prefer the other gods? Yeah. Let's read um, chapter 13, verses 1 to 14. I'll read. <clears throat> okay. Keep on loving one another as Christian brothers. Remember to welcome strangers in your homes. There were some who did that and welcomed angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Remember those who are suffering as though you were suffering as they are. Marriage is to be honored by all and husbands and wives must be faithful to each other. God will judge those who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Keep, our li keep your lives free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. Let us be bold then and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your former leaders who spoke God's message to you. Think back on how they lived and died and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not let all kinds of strange teachings lead you from the right way. It is good to receive inner strength from God's grace and not by obeying rules about foods. Those who obey these rules have not been helped by them. The priests who serve in the Jewish place of worship have no right to eat any of the sacrifice on our altar. The Jewish high priest brings the blood of the animals into the most holy place to offer it as a sacrifice for sins. But the bodies of the animals are burned outside the camp. For this reason, Jesus also died outside the city in order to purify the people from sin with his own blood. 
let us then go to him outside the camp and share his shame. For there is no permanent city for us here on earth. We are looking for the city which is to come. Let us then always offer praise to God as our sacrifice through Jesus, which is the offering presented by lips that confess him as Lord. Do not forget to do good and to help one another, because these are the sacrifices that please God. Do you want me to read yeah. on? Yeah, why don't you read on? Obey your leaders and follow their orders. They watch over your souls without resting, since they must give to God an account of their service. If you obey them, they will do their work gladly. If not, they will do it with sadness, and that would be of no help to you. Keep on praying for us. We are sure we have a clear conscience because we want to do the right thing at all times. And I beg you, even more earnestly, to pray that God will send me back to you soon. Hmm. There's a whole lot of stuff that he's put in that chapter. I like many things, but for instance, the last one, obey your leaders, I have sometimes difficulty. Which are my leaders? Mm. I always ask, which are the good leaders? Because sometimes there are leaders I cannot follow. We have, we have a footnote in mine mm -hmm. um, for um, verse, um, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same. Although the leaders of Christian community may change or die and teachings contrary to the gospel may arise, the basis of the enduring faith of the church is always the same. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I like that because you know we've all heard different views from different um, ministers or or whatever, um, even you know ministers on TV or what. But it still comes down to those basic things. <coughs> well, it doesn't say which kind of leaders are these: the political leaders or the religious leaders. Yeah, you're the, right. Scientific leaders. For me, uh, Christ is my leader. Mm -hmm. So I look first for him and then for the others. Mm -hmm. So I think that for today, our leaders are telling us that we can worship in other ways besides <laughs> gathering physically in one space. I think this is a good time to obey those leaders um, because that is for the good of the people. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we are actually discovering many, many ways to be the church that we weren't taking time to do before. So rather than being restrained and, and prisoners, we can choose to be free even within the confines of our house. We can choose to be a community of faith and to see each other and to be talking and sharing and supporting each other. Mm -hmm. Saw on TV last night that there are church, mega churches that are planning to have service today. Just wonder where their heads are. <laughs> Who's, who is their leader? Well, I know I saw one of the the um, so-called leader, I guess you'd say, um, and the and the person interviewing said, you know, well, you know, what if what if you have it and you're spreading it to your, you know, congregation? And he said, well, it'll be what's to be will be, you know, in other words, you know, but I'm thinking to myself, you're, you're taking all the, I mean, I understand that if you feel that way about yourself, that God will take you in his time. But do you also need to take every innocent person with you? You know, it's, it reminds me of, oh, pardon? 
no, I just, I, I, I think it just sort of blows my mind that they are, maybe they're self-proclaimed ministers. I don't know, but I don't know how you could feel that way when, you know, I mean, we all believe in the power of, of God and the healing of Christ. But I mean, that's, that's just stupid. You know, I. Even Martin Luther said it was stupid. Well, um, I, I think it's, I think it's lacking creativity to see what the body of Christ is and to see how we can work. What it reminds me of is the devil taking Jesus to a high point and telling him to jump off and that God would save him. And Jesus' response is, don't tempt the Lord your God. And he responds with scripture. And I think there's a lot of scripture that tells us um, take care of your fellow human beings love your fellow human beings don't spread risks unnecessarily don't you know that's not loving so we don't have to jump off the top of a place and then watch god deliver us i think we have some potential early church worshipers joining us mm. Mm -hmm. the lord is risen is yeah, risen, risen indeed. indeed. We should let Kiri play some music. Yeah, let's read the last five verses, the benediction. God has raised from death our Lord Jesus, who is the great shepherd of the sheep, as a result of his sacrificial death, by which the eternal covenant is sealed. May the God of peace provide you with every good thing you need in order to do his will. And may he, through Jesus Christ, do in us what pleases him. And to Christ be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I beg you, my brothers, to listen patiently to this message of encouragement. For this letter I have written you is not very long. I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been let out of prison. If he comes soon enough, I will have him with me when I see you. Give our greetings to all your leaders and to all God's people. The brothers from Italy send you their greetings. May God's grace be with you all. And also with you.